Hello students, as we have seen in boundary layer theory, how a boundary layer is created? That is, it is the adjacent layer to the solid where the velocity of the fluid is zero. As it gradually increases, what happens is the velocity gradient also increases. That means at the bottom, the velocity is zero. At the end of the boundary layer, the velocity is maximum. Now, what we will see in this section is, is there a possibility when the boundary layer is separated? That means due to no slip condition, that is we have consider what is no slip condition, but there will be a possibility where the entire boundary layer has been shifted. So let us study that in detail. Boundary layer separation. In boundary layer separation, what we have to study over here is first of all, how is a boundary layer made? Now, let us see this. So, now this is the starting point or the point where the boundary layer will be zero. So, from there, there will be this boundary layer. Now, how a boundary layer is created? So, this is a surface. A solid surface or a plate which is kept in a fluid which is moving at velocity u so when it is moving at velocity u this is the leading edge at this point the velocity will be zero directly uh, there will be a stagnation point and then the velo then there will be a formation of boundary layer now what happens is this thin layer at this part at y is equals to zero its velocity is zero and it ends at y is equals to delta where the velocity is u infinity rather 0 0.99 times u infinity that is the free stream velocity now over here we have seen the velocity gradient is maximum in the boundary layer so it is maximum in the boundary layer <coughs> now as we go away from the leading edge the boundary layer also increases now if there is this layer of the fluid which is just adjacent to the solid there the velocity will be zero but as it goes ahead there will be the change in the velocity that the velocity goes on increasing but the increase in this energy that is the increase in this velocity is due to the coefficient of viscosity between the fluid if the coefficient of viscosity or the viscosity is very high then what happens is there is decrease in the boundary uh, there is increase in the rather not decrease there is increase in the boundary layer thickness why there is increase in the boundary layer thickness because to achieve u infinity it is taking a long time uh, not a long time a large amount of distance to attain a u infinity but for a fluid which is less viscous the boundary layer separation is boundary layer is very less now we have seen what is boundary layer over here now second thing which we need to study is the pressure gradient now pressure gradient is given by dou p by dou x now the pressure gradient over here is pressure is changing with the value of x so as x increases what happens if the for the pressure gradient Initially, the pressure gradient is less than zero. Now, what do you mean over here? It is less than zero. This delta P can be written as P2 minus P1 upon X2 minus X1, which is less than zero. That means it will be negative. Now, if dou P by dou X is negative, then we can write P1 is greater than P2. So if P1 is greater than P2, if there is a section over here, section 1, 1 and section somewhere over here, section 2, 2. 
So P1, the pressure over here is greater than the pressure of the fluid in this part due to which what happens is due to a large amount of pressure which is at section 1 1 and it decreases along section 2 2 what happens is the boundary layer start boundary layer sticks to the solid surface but as we go further there this part tends to zero and then it increases beyond zero so let us consider a boundary layer over here or a solid surface this is the solid surface and this is the leading edge so there will be a formation of some boundary layer now let us consider a few points over here this is a this is b this is c s and d let us consider a few points over here so now over here <coughs> the pressure gradient is negative so there will be a positive there will be a positive velocity gradient over here also the till point c the pressure gradient is positive now to understand this part why the pressure gradient uh, pressure gradient over here sorry uh, the pressure gradient here is negative but the velocity gradient is positive now on this part as it comes to this part the pressure gradient becomes zero and beyond this part the pressure gradient becomes negative now let us understand this part in this entire diagram so now what happens over here the pressure gradient is negative that is dou p by dou x the slope is negative here the slope is dou p by dou x is equals to zero and here the slope is dou p by dou x which is greater than zero now over here this is the solid surface above the solid surface there will be a surface of the fluid and then there will be a formation of a boundary layer now initially what happens is this point the velocity will be zero but as it goes ahead what happens is it has to apply a large amount of frictional force in order to maintain the proximity of so what happens further is as it goes ahead as it goes ahead the value of boundary layer increases now what happens to the bottom most layer bottom most layer is in contact with the solid once is in it is in contact with the solid the solid does not allow this layer to flow but as we go ahead the this part increases that is the y value the boundary layer thickness increases now this increase in the boundary layer thickness comes with an expense of kinetic energy now that expense of kinetic energy is taken from the adjacent boundary layer for example as it goes ahead this is traveling with some velocity u1 this is traveling with velocity u2 u3 u4 and so on and so forth now to end the boundary layer it should attend the velocity u infinity but as it goes ahead these layers keep on increasing and what happens is the grip of this layer with the solid decreases and there arises where the pressure gradient over here just becomes zero and beyond that the pressure gradient what happens is becomes positive once the pressure gradient becomes positive the this bottom most layer of the fluid loses the contact with the solid because of the negative pressure gradient beyond that beyond that there will be a positive positive velocity gradient and there will be a negative velocity gradient over here but a positive pressure gradient in this entire part now apart from this what we have to understand over here that once it goes beyond point s it is on the verge of 
boundary layer separation and if we further increase the velocity then uh, further increase go beyond point s then there is boundary layer separation now during boundary layer separation what happens is there may be two condition there will be a laminar sub layer or a turbulent sub layer depending upon the surface of this entire fluid uh, surface of this entire solid so generally there will be a formation of laminar sub layer after it depends on the surface roughness so now we have seen these entire graph what we'll do over here we'll evaluate when the boundary layer separation will occur now there are two conditions over here that is pressure gradient pressure gradient velocity gradient now if the pressure gradient is positive do p by do x is positive then what happens is du by dy becomes negative now if this becomes negative then boundary layer separation has occurred boundary layer separation has occurred now if do p by do x do p by do x is equals to zero and then do u by do x is equals to zero it is on the verge of separation it is on verge of separation and if and if do p by do x is less than zero and do u by do y is greater than zero then what happens is over here boundary layer separation does not occurs now why this is important to study uh, if the boundary layer separation has occurred that means there is more of drag friction than skin friction skin friction is along the surface of that entire body but drag friction due to this negative pressure gradient there will be some amount of wake or some amount of drag now that will decrease the velocity of the fluid uh, that will decrease the velocity of the fluid or the velocity with which the body is flowing because there is more amount of drag over here secondly all the all the bodies which flow through a fluid are made aerodynamic all the bodies which flow through air are made aerodynamic so that there is minimum amount of boundary layer separation now what do you mean by minimum amount of boundary layer separation that means from the start of the body to the end of the body if this is the start of the body this is the stagnation point till the end of the body there should be no boundary layer separation if there is no boundary layer separation that means the drag force induced by the tail will be zero now if the drag force is induced by the tail that means that means the entire body is not aerodynamically designed there is some boundary layer separation now generally the boundary layer separation occurs when a body is not aerodynamic or what happens is if the body is a vertical body so during this the air will come in this direction and some air will flow away in this direction and then there will be a formation of eddies over here because the pressure on the left hand side if consider p1 the pressure on the right hand side consider p2 now since pressure p1 is greater than p2 this will have some drag on the body but once it's once the 
fluid flows in this direction what happens is there is a formation of negative pressure due to this negative pressure there is formation of turbulence over here and due to which what happens is this is dragged away in this direction so for an effective effective flow of the body through a uh, through a fluid there should be a minimum amount of boundary layer separation and if the body uh, has a more amount of boundary layer separation then there will be lots of a uh, drag in that part now this boundary layer separation is ap applied in windmills as well as aeroplanes as well as in fluids or uh, in uh, design of automobile also in mid 1920s when automobiles were designed they were made somewhat like this so this was a typical automobile which was made in in a rectangular part but modern automobiles are made in this direction such that such that there is minimum amount of boundary layer separation there is minimum amount of boundary layer separation on this entire surface now what happens due to minimum amount of boundary layer separation is the force induced by drag is very less and when the force induced by drag is very less there is a very small amount of drag friction and there will be some skin friction but the drag friction is very less due to the change in this entire design the vehicle can travel at a very high velocities because there is less amount of drag another example we can take is a drop of water which is left which is freely falling initially it will be spherical in shape as it comes down it attains a aerodynamic shape now once it attains a aerodynamic shape this is typically uh, a shape of water over here there is minimum amount of boundary layer separation now if the boundary layer separation has occurred for this drop then this drop will convert into large amount of small droplets and again that droplets will be formed in this entire shape now this shape is a aerodynamic shape which we can see a streamline or an aerodynamic shape which is seen in the shape of fishes also or aquatic animals it is seen in the um, it is uh, this is also experienced in uh, birds they have a beak which is designed aerodynamically why it is designed aerodynamically it can cut through the various layers of the fluid without inducing a drag as well as the skin friction is very small as possible so i hope you have understood what is boundary layer separation and its application in real life as well as what are the main uh, main factors responsible for boundary layer separation thank you